Welcome everyone to this South Asia Creative Discussion at Armani. Thank you for having us. Um, I'd like to start by telling you what I'm wearing. No, I'm not that good. Maybe I am. But I'm, I want to tell you what I'm wearing for a specific reason. And what I'm wearing is boots from Black Sheep Empire, silk pants from PSJ, a clutch, from uh, Turkish projects, silk tank from Grana, and this lovely scarf from Loyola Gang. Not, not, not to mention the least, um, I've got this lovely ring from me. Why am I telling you what I'm wearing? Um, it's because it really fits in with this topic today. What I'm wearing are all local brands, all local popular brands, and South Asia is very much a supporter. Of local brands, and that's what we're here to talk about today how to build your brand. But let me start by introducing my fellow panelists and my special members. We've got Matt Ling from Coaching Collective, Laura Derry from uh, Prime, your marketing agency, and Eric Bidron from Dynasty. Oh, like, I'm a more type A person, and so I'm generally like, oh, like, I'm just waiting for an idea to come to me. And, then, and that's what makes me not move, right? So the flip side of that is that most creators that I know are get too many ideas, but like, oh, I don't want to pick one because they're all good or maybe they'll waste time. Um, and so, you know, one of the biggest things is, like, start moving forward with one. I mean, just pick one. Like, you know, if you have some inkling, like, I mean, I could ask you, like, what's your favorite idea? And you'd be like, oh, I don't know. But if, if I had your head and said, what's your favorite one, you'd tell me which one. And so if you can take that like process and say, okay, I'm just gonna pick this one. I want to make glass like beer bottles that are blue instead of green. Like that's my crazy idea. And if you start walking towards that, at least you start shortening the path. Like so if you um I'll see, I wish I had run for it, but if you have like ten ideas and it's kind of in this horizon, and if you don't move or if you just start like kind of meandering between all of them not committing to one, you end up moving back and forth quite a bit. And so you waste a lot of time. Like, yeah, choose one and take that first step. Like it's it's probably the most like fearful and like scary part because you're gonna commit to something, but that's like that's kind of the bottom line. So pick one project. Pick one. Stick, stick to it. Well, or say that, hey, I'll try it for like three months, right? Try it for a week, right? If it's too scary to go three months, try it for a week. Once you started your brand, or you started your project, um, I think a lot of small, maybe even medium-sized businesses are struggling with, how do I get heard? How do people notice me? What are your tips? So obviously your population's PR is one element of your marketing mix. So I would say your new brand is a cost-effective medium to use to, to build your brand. Um, you won't have big advertising budgets, so you can't be splashing out massive big spreads in sort of the Squire or Maxim or you know, Jane Ann, whichever sort of publications are it's for you, very cool. Wherever you're looking, wherever you, you obviously know your target market. So PR is one way of cost effectively actually reaching your target audience through whether it's through magazines or TV. Um, you reach a bigger audience. So that advert that you save all your pennies for to be an L may cost the same as hiring a PR firm or a freelancer to do your PR, but you're reaching more mediums. So you're spreading the word, you're reaching out more to more people. Um, you obviously want to build your exposure as much as you can. There's other ways as well. I mean, you see Sandra, you're running Star by Asia, and within your readership, you are for the high audiences, you're as a journalist, I promote my clients to people like you. Um, and so, you know, figuring out who who your audience is, what they're reading, what they're doing, and basically sort of totally assessing that so that you can then get into their lives, their, their zone. But so you, so you were saying actually that even if you're a small brand, it pays off to hire a PR agent rather than sort of going here and there with different marketing campaigns and, and, and paying for advertisers. So I'm not going to do myself out of business, but some people are just naturally PR people. So you might, so I think Sandra, you're very PR 
savvy, um, hosting evenings like this. This is a complete, this is a PR event for Star by Asia. PR is a cost effective way because you're sort of reaching out multiple media and multiple journalists who will then basically be writing about you. And the difference between PR and advertising is people buy that magazine and watch that television show or listen to that radio program because they're interested in the content. You're working with journalists like Sandra, who then basically, my job is to pitch that brand um, and to get the journalists excited about the brand that they write about it, and it's a third party talking about it. So therefore, it's giving you cre uh, credibility as a brand because somebody's recommending it and reviewing it for you. But, um, I've had my PR business for seven years now. Um, I quickly had to get Chinese stuff. But 80% of the media in Hong Kong is Chinese. I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak Chinese, I don't speak Mandarin. So my staff are very lucky to have a great team um, who all speak probably three languages, and it's been about 30 ones. Um, but the, so I'm in three pitches business. That was the first thing I had to do, and I had to do really quickly. So, Eric, I think that you guys at Dynasty, you, you obviously you're doing really well using social media, and you're posting and doing all kinds of different things. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I don't know if you were lucky, but uh, we kind of viral, and um, the recipe of that, I don't really know, that just happened. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, um, like, if you go back to the ID part, if you have something that they really believe in and keep promoting that and being it. Actually, um, so one of the exercises that I do with some of my clients, uh, and some of you may be familiar with the uh, customer persona exercise. And so, like, so my friend, Man, a penny back there, uh, has a bikini company. And so, like, if I were to think, okay, who are the buyers of these bikinis? And I'm like, well, so I'm going to pick, like, three different people. Like, and I'm going to create people that are actually these buyers. So one is going to be a girl, and she's probably going to be 25, and she, you know, lives in Hong Kong. And I'm going to create that out. And down to the, like, what kind of magazines does she read? What does she read? Like, what does she do, like, at home? Like, does she sit and, like, play with her dog? Does she like going out to eat dinner? Like, does she like coming to, like, events like this? And to really get specific about like who that person is. Uh, so two years ago, I went to Bangkok to start my own business. Uh, I was a solo entrepreneur, and you know I thought, oh, this is great. Like I can make my own decisions. You know, there's nobody else that you know is going to fight me. Um, this turned into well, there's like nobody else to talk to, and so it's just me talking to the wall and responding like, that's a really good idea. <laughs> this is a really good idea. Um, and so this time around, uh, one of the reasons I took. Uh, I joined my partners as so a partner in LA and a partner in Brazil. And so, like the like, if you have an idea, like I would highly recommend going to find somebody else to do it with. Like doing it on your own, it's really lonely. Entrepreneurship is probably one of the loneliest things I've ever done in my life, um, and nobody really talks about it, right? You're like, oh, like you, you pretend to be on all the time. Like, it's very lonely, and. Um, and so that would be the biggest learning, I think, you know, across the last couple of years in terms of, like, what would have changed, you know, that, that last thing, right? Like, oh, I did help her. And then, yeah, you know, and are, are these, you know, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're really bad, right? And if there's nobody to be a sounding board who is invested as much as you are, like, you know, I'm talking to my girlfriend, and she's like, oh, well, yeah, whatever. Okay. But it's not her business, and she's not as invested. And so find that person, I think it's really beneficial. Don't, don't underestimate um, using people in your network, using other entrepreneurs, other freelancers. There are great websites out there for freelancers, for, uh, there are a few co-working spaces in Hong Kong that also have websites where you can post jobs. Oftentimes, you will be able to get someone to do the job they need, whether it's photography, like photographing your, your products, making a video, or, or Improving your website, whatever it may be. Yeah. So the comment is that what we've been talking about probably is better for brands, not artists. I agree. Um, but it also, one of the reasons why I also started Salvation was because I work together with a lot of bloggers, but they, like I said before, often they have their own company or they are an artist or a gallery owner or something like that. What I found is that there are so many talented people in Hong Kong. But like you say, if someone is very artistic, they're normally not that good at marketing themselves. Let's not Exactly. 
So that's actually something that we are helping you know, local artists, local brands with, is to reach out to the audience, to give them a platform where they can talk about their brand or their art. But it can also be just using uh, a photographer that's starting out that has maybe been not working that long. But you take beautiful pictures, you've seen examples of their pictures before, you've seen a bit of their portfolio, and they can in turn use your photos of your, your products to build their portfolio. So things like that also. It doesn't always have to be to team up with a big brand. It can be with someone who can actually do something for you and then use what they've done for you in their marketing process.